Good morning. Welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. I promised you the mayor. I have the mayor. Mayor Bill Peduto joins us today. We have a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I appreciate it indeed. And let me first ask you, I mean, how are you dealing with pandemic, this new way of life? We all thought this was going to be for a couple of weeks, and now we're months into a new life. Yeah, I, I, I'd say I'm adapting slowly. I, uh, I, uh, I like being downtown, so I spend about three or four days a week down in the office with just two staff members down there. Um, but at that same time, I, you know, I've got a great staff around me that have been able to pick up the ball and run very well. Um, it's a difficult job to do virtually. Uh, so even though we can still deliver the services, being a mayor really means being out and about mm -hmm. and, uh, trying to adapt that to, a, a virtual world is, uh, it may be impossible, but trying to adapt. So one of the things that I think all cities and Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh is included in this is going to have to confront when we come out of this is going to be financial issues. Are you concerned about that at this point? I am. Uh, you know, we are projecting 17 to 20 percent lost revenue this year, meaning the amount of revenue that we had budgeted, the amount of revenue that we'll actually be bringing in will be about $100 million short. Uh, fortunately, we have been very prudent in the past six years and we've put away money each year, uh, but we'll have spent all of that by the end of the year just to meet payroll. Looking at next year and the year after that, we are projecting deficits to continue, especially with parking tax, amusement tax, and these are big numbers for us. Um, and we can't really tax our way uh, out of that situation because people are hurting. We can't borrow our way out. That's what we did back in the 90s, which led to the city going under financial control. So we really have to be creative in trying to find different ways to do it. Uh, I'm convinced that Washington will do the right thing. They will realize that this is an economic pandemic for cities as well and they'll create a solution that will help all cities, uh, whether in a red state, a blue state, uh, democratically controlled, Republican controlled, all mayors are facing the same situation. And that is probably especially troubling because as you know, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about uh, was the fact that there has been renewed conversation, uh, renewed concern about the state of black Pittsburgh these days. Um, and the big question when people say Pittsburgh is a very livable city, but then there is a comma, but for who? And many of the African American, many members of the African American community here say, but not for us. Yeah, I, I think that we have shown that uh, through the report we did uh, last year, that was about two years worth of work mm -hmm. in planning in looking at creating a benchmark of how do we attack uh, systemic racism and also uh, issues of gender equity uh, while at the same time putting actual numbers behind it so you cannot say that it doesn't exist. There is disparity that exists based on the color of your skin in the city of Pittsburgh when it comes to health care, when it comes to education, when it comes to housing, when it comes to transportation. You can actually see what those numbers are our responsibility is making those numbers go down and holding us accountable on an annual basis to be able to show that we're doing something in order to address it. And when you don't have measurement, you're just practicing and you really need to be able to create a baseline of where you're at if you want to show improvement. Now, for a lot of people, the issues uh, that are being uh, recognized are issues that are being answered with emotional response. And that is understandable. People are upset. They're angry. They're sad. They're, they're, and they're acting as people react when you're angry or you're sad. It's emotional. But what really needs to be looked at are the partnerships that need to be created to solve these problems. City government can't do it alone. It, it, we, we need to have strong partners who are willing to invest money 
in order to be able to recognize where the problems exist and then want to see the changes and measure those changes. It's hard to talk in pragmatic terms during an emotional time, but I think it's absolutely critical that city government take that tack. Um, you know, we pride ourselves on Fred Rogers and Fred Rogers pride, was proud of the, his message of compassion, his message of kindness and his message of civility. And I think that is absolutely necessary as we're going to be able to address the systemic racism in our city and do so with a whole host of partners to, who in the past have not really spoken out about these this issue uh but right now are and not to push them out but to ask them to do more and you know you you say a couple of things that i've actually mentioned uh in the course of conversation that i want to pick up on we'll take a commercial break and this is exactly where we're going to pick up the conversation when the lynn hayes freeland show continues so don't go away <laughs> 